we wake? Hi, it's Darren here from Art by Darren, welcoming you to another Art Start DIY fun. project. Today we're doing some coastal autumn decor. Let's get started. Starting off with some decor pumpkins. Now I got this, I think it's called Anko uh, chalk paint from Kmart. I wanted to give it a try. It was only about four or five dollars. Um, I really love the colours, but I'm not quite so sure that it's chalk paint. It didn't seem very thick when I put it on, um, and it kind of was glossy a little bit as well. So anyway, the colours were really beautiful, and these are pumpkins that I've got here I ordered from Amazon, and I've just given those a coat of paint each. You can see the little stems here on top that I've painted with a bit of brown and black uh, and just putting those back into those as well and trying a little bit of string decided it eh, didn't really like it so I just decided to leave those plain because I am going to do some that are now covered with fabric so I had these scrap fabric in my stash if you're wanting to get small squares of fabric, go to any of the fabric stops, Spotlight, Lincraft, they'll have all of these smaller squares of fabrics. They're called Fat Quarters and you can use those uh, for this kind of project. So I've got some blue and white. When you cut a square to go around a sphere, you'll end up with a short bit. <laughs> Find where that short bit is before you glue it down because you might end up with a gap. Um, I'll show you this. I did it a few times just so that you can see it. Uh, you really do need to find where that short bit is in a square and a sphere. Just don't mix together. Okay, so I've just covered it. I'm using my Gorilla glue gun here. And I ordered the one from Amazon, yes. And guess what? It came with a American plug, didn't it? So luckily for me, my hubby's American, who I was, and uh, I've got a converter here so I can use it. Just be careful if you do decide to order that Gorilla Glue Gun from Amazon because it does come with American plug. But it is good stuff, I do like it. <clears throat> so here I've just put a bit of string. This is uh, a twine that I got from Spotlight. It's a bit thicker than your normal twine. You can see it's not as hairy as most twines. And I just glued that on the top with a little bit of hot glue as well. Now here I'm measuring this. I had to undo it <laughs> because I had that short bit right there. That's the short bit. Careful for that. Okay, so we're just going to cover these. I, I chose this um, this sort of fawny brown colour just as a juxtaposition. I didn't have any of that sort of mossy green fabric uh, colour. So I thought I'd go with this sort of brown in colour, which is quite pretty. It's got a little paisley design on it there. Again, putting a string. You start with the outside circle and work your way in. I found it was the easiest way to get everything covered. And I'll put that on with my pencil. And oh no, I've got. I'm going to show you another one. Sorry, guys. I should have cut this out. Probably. I did. I did fast forward it. There we go. Oh, it was really fast. Don't worry about it. So next, the blessed pumpkin. This I did order from Amazon as well. It's just a pumpkin flat. That's why this video is out so late, is I was waiting for stuff to come from the States. So I'm a bit behind with this, but I just put some white chalk paint on it again. Not sure if this is chalk paint or just acrylic paint. Um, I did order some folk, more of folk art stuff just to see, because I know that is thicker and better. God, I'm yawning, sorry. <sighs> okay. So here I've just lined my pumpkin up on my grid. So you can see I've lined up on the five centimetre marks there. Just so it's all nice and even. Those mats are really good for that. Um, and I'm just doing like a shiplap design on this. Just using a black marker. <laughs> Again with the twine around the top. Just gluing it front and back with this because it, it doesn't stay on. Unless it's glued down on the front and the back. Because it is a thicker twine. Oh, sorry, I had a really big yawn. And using a lighter there just to burn off some of that. And writing Blessed oh, a couple of times. I don't know what it is. My B, see my B is really big. And my D always goes little on the end. I, I don't know why. That's just the way. That's my handwriting. So this is the easiest way to do this sort of writing. 
is to draw it first and then to widen your downward stroke and just colour it in. I'm just using a black mark here. I found it's the easiest way to do this sort of thing. Now I've got some autumn leaves and a few little autumn flowers and beads, a little berry I should say, and a little bit of blue uh, ribbon. And now I'm taking some of these tumbling box again from Amazon and just gluing those onto the back so that this can stand up on its own. As you see right there. And adding a little bit of um, just uh, chalk paint dry brushed on the front there as well. And I just painted the back white as well. You should probably see bits of it while it's standing upright. So I'm going to make some autumn beads. Uh, again from Amazon, some wooden beads. Just put them on skewers. This is the easiest way I've found to paint beads. Uh, stuck into a bit of styrofoam and uh, you can just spin them around as you paint them then. It makes it really quite quick. And I didn't mention at the beginning too, I put those pumpkins on skewers as well. I find I put most things that I can't hold in my hands on skewers so I can paint them. So just using that blue colour from Kmart again. It's a really pretty blue. I mean, I must say I do like it. And just getting out my white gesso now just to put some dry brushing on. So to dry brush, put some paint on your paintbrush. Tap off most of it onto a piece of paper so that you just end, you've just got little bits on your brush. And I'm using a very hairy brush here, as you can see. This is one of my very old brushes. And it's great for making these kind of marks. And just gently, like, hair's breath touching onto the beads, just so you get this very fine little marks. You can see it here close up. Gives it a really nice distressed kind of look. And I've got some autumn leaves, again from Amazon. Uh, I did get some other flowers in this from Wedding Flowers and Parties, I think it was called. And they were really good as well. So just using a paper punch to put a hole. I didn't take the hole out. I, don't, you know, I like that it could cover up the uh, twine when it goes in there. So I'm putting the beads onto this twine. I've got my skewer there to push any beads that you can't get it through. Just use the skewer to push them a little tighter now. Tying it through and you can see here I'm pushing that excess uh, cord back up three beads. That's just a jewelry maker's trick. You do that when you do any sort of bead making. I'm not into the habit of doing it. It also means that when I want to untie this for say spring I can just untie that end and it'll be fine. Now I'm making a simple tassel here just on a piece of cardboard wrapping it around and around with some twine tying it off also tying the end of the beads right to the top of the tassel there so it's all joined in at one there and then trimming it off as well. I found a few beads that <laughs> needed a touch up. Now we're going to make a plaited wreath. This 8mm by 10m uh, cord I got from Bunnings, it wasn't very much, and it is really, really rough. So just be careful with your fingers with this one, plaiting it is not fun. But you need to cut pieces, I cut six lengths of about a metre 40 each. I'd say you probably only need a metre 20 if that, of um, uh, six pieces of rope. And then you can uh, wrap the ends with some twine and then plait. I'm not going to show you how to plait. I know you all know how to plait. And then go around till, uh, yeah, so it's about a metre 20. And here I'm going to show you how to do a macrame knot. So you make a loop and then you wrap really tightly around that loop. So you've got one end that's free and the other end's got a loop. Keep wrapping around, wrapping around. See, I showed you the loop right there. <laughs> and when you get to this part, you feed that end through the loop and then pull the other end and bang. Look at that. It's knotted and you cut those end bits off and you've got a knot that's totally covered. Just cutting this. I left this in so you could see how difficult it was to, 
to cut through this but you can actually cut through it with pair of scissors so it just takes a little bit of time and then we're going to tie this all together at the top as well with another knot now you need to cut about a meter of rope uh, sorry of string when you make these uh, kind of knots because you'll see here I don't cut a meter of string and I try and tie it with a less right here try and do the same thing again with the loop one end free the loop at the other end and you can see I just don't have enough to go around at all and when you try and feed it through it pulls it back out the top so you really do need to wrap it around that sort of six eight times at least <clears throat> and now we're gonna add some autumn flowers here. So we've got some gerberas, some roses, some autumn leaves, and some eucalyptus leaves in first. I'm just gonna thread these actually into in between the plaits. Uh, so for the most part, I'm just using the ends of the um, twigs uh, to sort of feed through. I do end up put, adding a little bit of wire at the end. And I do wrap this middle section with some ribbon as well. Uh, just, you know, whatever's pleasing to you. This pleases me. If it doesn't please you, I'm sorry about that, but it pleases me. So here's my autumn wreath. And uh, putting some daisies in because you always got to have some daisies. Oh, and this ribbon. Oh my God. Oh, it was so frustrating. I just couldn't get my head around a ribbon. <laughs> I've done the weirdest thing. I thought this black ribbon was the um, the wide ribbon that I bought and it wasn't and I'd already tied it and glued it and it was all stuck there and it was like well guess what that's how that ribbon's looking. So I hope you enjoyed that. Here's all of them out on my sideboard. We have our blessed pumpkins. Oh and that's a real uh, Kent pumpkin there. It's a real one. You can store pumpkins as long as they have their tops in them. That's why we see pumpkins on doorsteps. That's how it all started, pumpkins on doorsteps. It's because you're drying your pumpkins. And I've scattered some leaves down with there as well. And there's our little decor pumpkins, our beads. And our decor pumpkins again. I forgot there was this many shots in here. Sorry about that. And then we're going to get to the, oh, the candles from Amazon and the pumpkins again. And there we go. There's a wreath of our autumn leaves. I hope you enjoyed that video. Join me next time for more craft or art. Or DIY, depends what I'm in the mood for. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me today. Bye for now. Side by side and through and